Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Bolt Action video. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another Bolt Action unit. Now, over the course of this series, we have reviewed a lot of German tanks and we've even dabbled in some Allied and Japanese ones as well. But there is one faction who we have not given their well-deserved attention. That is, up until now. That's right, it's time to head over to the Eastern Front and engage in the Great Patriotic War. Let's take a look at some Soviet Union tanks. And where better to start than a vehicle named after the very leader of one of the most important nations of World War II. We are, of course, talking about the Josef Stalin II Heavy Tank, more commonly known as IS-2. And so without further ado, let's take a look at the good, the bad, please let's submit to a gulag, and the ugly of this iconic Soviet vehicle. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of this unit. Let's start off by going over its veterancy and points cost. At inexperience, the IS-2 will be 256 points. At regular, it's 320. And at veteran, it's 384 points. As for its weapons, the IS-2 comes equipped with a turret-mounted heavy anti-tank gun with a coaxial MMG, one turret-mounted rear-facing MMG, and one forward-facing hull-mounted medium machine gun. You may add a HMG onto this vehicle for 25 points, giving it the potential to have four machine guns and that big cannon as well. Naturally, with the IS-2 being a heavy tank, it has the damage value of 10 plus. This is going to make it quite resistant to a lot of medium and low level anti-tank options. For example, if someone hits you with a light anti-tank gun over long range, they can't penetrate your front armor. Even a medium AT gun, which is one of the more common options you will find in many people's armies, will only be able to glance you on your front armor at long range. Really, you want to be trying to get side shots on the IS-2 unless you are packing some pretty hefty punch with heavy or super heavy anti-tank guns. This vehicle also has a couple of special rules. The first one is a straight buff. Big HE means that your heavy anti-tank gun actually has a three inch blast template when shooting at infantry. This is really tasty. It means that whilst you don't have the penetrative power of a super heavy anti-tank, you do get the benefit on the anti-infantry front. And bear in mind that a lot of bot action is about killing infantry. It's often described as the infantryman's game. Anything that can boost your ability to play that game, or at least counter it, is very, very tasty. So the three inch blast template is a nice thing to have on this vehicle. Unfortunately, the second special rule is not so patriotic, and that is slow load. A IS-2 cannot be given an order until at least one other unit on the same side has already been given orders, whether successfully or not. Fortunately, there is a very easy way round this special rule, which is have a junior officer, and most armies will have a junior officer, so almost a, a tax is a mantra unit, and just put that unit next to the IS-2. When you draw your first order dice, your junior officer will, will be able to snap two. So he does his order first, and then you pull a dice and you do the IS-2. It's a very simple way round, but it does mean that you will be burning through a couple of dice early on, which may mean that you lose some dice advantage in the bag. Now that just about covers all the different bits and bobs on this tank, but we now need to get below the surface, scratch off a bit of the paint and find out if it is steel underneath or pig iron. I'm gonna say straight up that I think the IS-2 is a pretty good vehicle, not only for larger point and fun games, but also very much for your standard games of bolt action, things like 1000 points or 1250 points. 
yes, it is more expensive than what a lot of people would consider meta bolt action armor, things like your cheap double machine gun tanks. But it is not prohibitively expensive. It doesn't hugely cut into the rest of your list. Being able to get a heavy tank with an actual good gun, with that gun being even better on the HE front than expected, or only 320 points is actually quite the steal. If you compare this to something like the British Churchill, which is a bit cheaper at about 275 points for a lot of the variants. Well, sure, you've, you've got a heavy tank, but you haven't got as many machine guns. You haven't got the option to add more machine guns. And the big limiting factor with the Churchill is it's only got a medium AT. That's all right if you're playing against like someone else's like light or medium vehicle, you'll have a bit of an advantage. But if you're playing a normal game of or action, you're more than likely going to be encountering someone's old well, Panther or Panzer IV. And at which point you'll find the Churchill feels like it's okay on the armor, but it's not really doing great on the damage front. Whereas with the IS-2, you pay a few more points and it's like, okay, I'm bringing the heavy armor and I'm also going to have a gun that is actually going to be a threat to your German vehicles. But now let's compare it to its contemporaries over in the Axis, and that is going to be the Tiger 1. The IS-2 is significantly, notably cheaper than the Tiger 1, and yet brings a lot of the same stuff to the table. Tiger 1 has got heavy armor, like the IS-2. Tiger 1 comes with a couple of forward-facing machine guns, like the IS-2. In fact, the only real advantages the Tiger has over the IS-2 is one, it has a super heavy anti-tank gun, and two, it's not slow load. Now, the super heavy anti-tank gun is obviously going to be good if an IS-2 and a Tiger get into a fight, because it's going to give the German vehicle an advantage in both range, half range, and penetrative power. But when you take into account that the IS-2's got big HE, it actually has the same blast template, the same high explosive potential as that Tiger. And considering that all action is, as previously mentioned, an infantryman's game, being able to match the Tiger on that front is arguably more important than what the tank on tank situation is going to be. And like we pointed out before, Slow load is very easy to get around as long as you've got a junior officer. And considering you are mandated, you are forced to take one of those in a normal reinforced platoon, it's not even tax, it's not even a cost. It's not something like a hidden thing you have to take into account for. And the IS-2 actually really is 320 points plus the cost of the officer. No, because the officer was going to be there anyway. Now, up until this point, we've really been looking at the numbers on the paper and comparing them. It's been quite a theory heavy video, but I want to for a moment just draw upon some of my personal experience involving this tank. I have faced off against the IS-2 multiple times. I've even used it in one of my own games and I've run several bolt action tournaments where these things were fielded and every single time they have really impressed me. Whatever the scenario that I've encountered them in, they've always been able to handle it. They are a little bit of a jack of all trades, but not a master of none, I would say a master of some situations. When I went up against one with my Germans, I've taken them on with the Panzer III and I've taken them on with the Panzer IV. The Panzer IV was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the IS-2. It didn't want to get hit by the thing, but it had that heavy anti-tank gun which could threaten it. The Panzer III was wholly outclassed and it really felt like the standard medium tank with medium AT gun really wasn't able to keep up with the heavy tank with the heavy anti tank gun. It sounds obvious and obviously my opponent was paying uh, over 100 points more for his vehicle so he should have got 100 points more worth out of it but it was still a very uncomfortable feeling and considering that the Soviets get that free infantry squad I didn't really feel like I had an advantage elsewhere in my list. My opponent just had a bigger tank than me and then was able to match me on the infantry front as well. And when I used a IS-2, I actually encountered a King Tiger on the other side of the table. And what I found was with the clever use of some heavy cover, I didn't really need to engage in a tank duel. And instead, whilst my opponent's King Tiger was desperately trying to stop my IS-2 because... 
it was the King Tower was his only real source of anti-tank. My IS-2 spent the most of the game just blasting away his infantry. And it kind of put my opponent in a really difficult situation because he wanted to use his King Tiger to come after my infantry. But I just had way more infantry than him. And so he was forced to try and deal with one of the principal anti-infantry threats of my army, which was the big HE on the big tank, whilst I was able to essentially ignore him and dominate on the infantry game. The only time I have seen an IS-2 struggle was in a competitive game. Now, I've run a few tournaments and the IS-2 has been present in several of those games and it always seems to have done okay. But there was this one game that I remember really stuck out vividly for me when the IS-2 and the Soviet player went up against a quite experienced Italian player. It was actually Salty Simon, my partner in crime for the battle reports on this channel. And he mains... Italians in by action. There is number one faction for it. So he's quite experienced with them and he's got quite a good uh, strategy nailed down with them. And what he did is he made sure that he used the dense terrain to not allow the IS-2 to engage with his uh, light arm. And he had two vehicles. He basically sent one down each flank whilst the IS-2 was trying to dominate the center. And what he did is he made sure that his armor spent the whole game going after the Soviet infantry using all those machine guns and every time that the IS-2 tried to target one of his infantry units, he just went down. But I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to be in some form of cover. And I'm going to go down. And th so that kind of frustrated the IS-2. And it didn't allow it to do what it wanted to do. Um, and it meant that the infantry kind of around it got killed. And at the end of the game, the Italians were able to win purely because they had killed everything but the IS-2. So the moral of that story is that this is a big tank big guns and it can be very effective but it's not an auto win unit it's not an auto include and it will still require good play to be used effectively on the tabletop in summary the is2 is one of those rare beasts which is a heavy tank that actually is usable on the tabletop sure it is more efficient to go for lots of machine guns on light vehicles but sometimes it's more fun to put down a heavy tank. And it's even better when you can do so without it feeling like that vehicle is tying one arm behind your back. But all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a big fan of the IS-2? Or is there another Russian tank that you prefer? And if so, let me know what it is and then I might be able to cover it in a future video. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do mordian glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney 
Thank you guys so much. Your incredible generosity is a massive part of how I'm able to do more Duke Glory full time. And it is a big driving force behind the channel. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.